Welcome to the Vol Bros. My name is Evan. This is my brother Rustin. We are two Vol Bros who are actually bros in real life. And man, oh man, are we excited about this episode. Uh, this is actually an episode we've been planning ever since we started this podcast uh, last November. And so I'm super excited about this because the more and more you think about our topic tonight, the harder and harder it becomes uh, to, to try to nail down five of the, the top five traditions of Tennessee football. Uh, there are an absolute ton of things we could choose from. Uh, just as an example of some of the things, and this is not a total list of all the options, because as you'll see, uh, Rustin's number four is not on this list. Uh, but, you know, we got the Vol Navy, Vol Walk, Pride of the Southland pregame, running through the T, checkerboard end zones, checker kneeling, which is a relatively new one, singing Rocky Top, singing Friends in Low Places, which is a relatively new one. Uh, reciting the maxims before they run out the tunnel. Uh, Tennessee circle drill, salute to the hill during the pregame march of the band. Uh, hearing the famous words, please pay these prices and please pay no more before the game. Hearing it's football time in Tennessee before the game. Uh, painting the rock, uh, hitting the I will give my all for Tennessee sign today as they run out of the locker room. I mean, there's so many. There's so many that we could choose from. So how in the world do you narrow it down to five? Well, that's our goal for tonight. We already got some folks joining us. Uh, Doug said it should be a good show tonight. Looking forward to this discussing this topic. I love it, Doug. Hey, we'd love to hear your uh, your top five. Zach, what's up, buddy? Hey, Zach. What's up, all bros? Just 37 days until your 2023 National Champions Day. Amen, brother. <laughs> that's right. Clad in big orange. That's right. So, uh, without further ado, we're, here's how we're going to do this. We're going to start at number five and work our way down to number one. Uh, we will go back and forth. And please, please let us know in the comments where you agree with us, where you disagree with us, where certain things should have been ranked because, my goodness, this is essentially an impossible task. Um, I, I wrote I initially wrote down a top five, and then I thought about it and thought about some other ones. I was like, nope, got to change it, and I changed it. Then I didn't uh, uh, kind of change that, too. And I went, I think this is my third edition of my top five here that we got going. Uh, but Rustin, what is your number five tradition in Tennessee football? Well, I think the point is that people understand that um, this is not going to be like nobody's top five is going to be the same because every every top five is going to be based on your personal experiences and and the That's memories that you have, the memories that you have individually and, you know, moments in time that stand out for you. So you know, there's definitely not a right or wrong here. Um, you know, cause you know, Tennessee fans can tend to get a little, a little irrational about ranking things. So I think we need to say Never. right on the front <laughs> end, <laughs> there, there is no right or wrong here. Um, you know, so my number five, and again, it's just personal preference. Um, you know, I love that they, that the, they paint the rock all the time. I, I just enjoy the, you know, the different things that people come up with, I can't draw a stick figure. So when people do stuff <laughs> like that, when they paint a almost three dimensional smoky on it, that just blows my mind. Like, I, I don't even know how you would begin to do something like that. Um, but you know, the fact that the rock, not just during football season gets used, but it gets used all throughout the year for a lot of different reasons. Um, I, lo I love uh, a couple of weeks ago, somebody proposed on it and the girl oh, didn't cool. know until they got till the rock. And as they got to the rock, she realized it was painted for her. Um, you know, cool. just a lot of really neat things like that that are always happening. And I think a tradition is really impressive when people try to copy it. And, and I think if you go around the state of Tennessee, there's high schools all over the state of Tennessee that have a rock that, you know, they can paint. And we all know where that came from. And so my number five is painting the rock. And how wild was it when literally 11 years worth of paint slid off of the rock several years ago? <laughs> that was wild. Absolutely wild. Well, my number five, and man, this is, like I said, I've, I've gone back and forth. At one point, this was number like three, and it's dropped all the way down to number five. Uh, but my number five is the Pride of the Southland pregame show and hearing the words, it's football time in Tennessee over the loudspeaker. Or, you know, if you're fortunate enough to hear John Ward say it on the radio, you know, so, so many things uh, that brings back memories. 
uh, what's funny about this picture is you can you can literally hear this photo. <laughs> you hear V O L S. You know, you can hear the whole stadium chanting that as they start slowly marching, you know, up the field <clears throat> in this photo. So I love the the pregame. Man, it's it's awesome hearing you know hundred thousand people chant those words and everything in in sync together it's it's really really cool so the the pregame you know seeing them form you know, spell out usa and then leading into opening the t which that's a whole separate one that might show up later on both of our lists but i um, mean how could it not so uh zach is already he, he's already alluding to that too he said he said everybody knows what's number one <laughs> he's like we just want to stay right now zach's number five was vol navy uh, that's that's going to show up on our list as well. Uh, Doug's number five was saying the maxims. Um, we'll show Doug's whole top five here in a minute. Uh, so, Rustin, what is your number four? So, I think my number four might be the most important thing that if everybody was being really, really honest, they would all list in their top five, but they may not have the guts to say so. Um, I hope when Danny White was hired that the alums in the athletic office pulled him aside and said, Danny, there is one part of Neyland Stadium that you absolutely cannot renovate. You cannot touch. It is where men or where boys learn to be men. It oh, is gosh. where boys <laughs> is where boys learn what real life is all about. And that is the Neyland Stadium Petroffs. And <laughs> for me, the there it is and for me the most important part of neyland stadium where where every young male who walked into that stadium learned what it means to be a man you you have not <laughs> found out you have not found out what it means to be a man until you have stood next to some gargantuan former f football alum and tried to pee in that trough and not be standing there getting an inferiority complex going dude this dude is huge so I think that is one of the, the greatest parts of Neyland Stadium. And, and it, it, it better never, ever go away because it separates the men from the boys. That is the most unique <laughs> three minutes <laughs> in the history of the Volbros. <laughs> this photo, this is... Now, I scoured the internet, and I did find an actual photo of one bathroom in Neyland Stadium. This is an actual yeah. trough in Neyland that's one Stadium. Of those, that's one of those small sidewall ones, though. Like, the, the full-scale, <laughs> 30-foot-long ones that run the length of the wall, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, you know, you said there's one thing that, that Danny White cannot touch and i was like you probably don't want to either <laughs> you probably it's, always don't want to touch it. it's always funny you see this long line of women outside the women's restroom there's never a line outside the men's room because 50 <laughs> of us will just walk in there and stand shoulder to shoulder and pee and walk right back out this this photo it almost looks like something from a horror film or something like it's all pixelated and everything <laughs> um that is that is uh most college football stadiums from 40 to 50 years ago, this was a fixture in them. Not so much anymore. So it's a, it's a antique. It's a dying breed here. And uh, man, oh man, that's, that's something right there. Most of which in, in Neyland stadium, I believe are now contained primarily to the Southeast corner of the stadium. I think that's where you'll find the majority of these. Uh, some of the other bathrooms have been renovated, but um Zach said, I can tell you that is not in my top five. <laughs> it wasn't in mine either, Zach. <laughs> um, Zach was proud of the Southland pregame. Yep, I totally agree. Well, my number four wasn't as good as that one. Um, and th th so here's where this gets tough because my number four at one point was number two. And the more I thought about different things, the more I was like, no, nah, that's got to go down uh my number four is the vol navy um i mean my goodness what a sight and one of the reasons why this was certainly in the top five was that 
the uniqueness of it. You know, I think there's only a handful, three, maybe four stadiums in all of college football where you can ride a boat to the stadium. Baylor University is one of them. Uh, Washington University is one of them. Or, or University of Washington. I don't know how they do that up there in the Northwest. Um, other, I think there's one other one that I just can't remember off the top of my head right now. So, I mean, this is unique, and this was the GOAT. This was the OG. Uh, this is the original. And so this was a Tennessee tradition that now others are trying to replicate. Um, I mean, just look at the this, this volume of sea craft there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, what an awesome thing. And, and it is so unique and it's so special. That's why when college game day comes, they always do a feature on the Vol Navy. Uh, that's why you saw, um, what's, oh uh, goodness, I can't even think of his name now. Um, well, that, good grief. Uh, college game day, new guy this year. Uh, Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee. I was thinking, I was thinking Pat something. Uh, Pat McAfee, you know, doing the backflip off the boat into the Tennessee River. So I mean, Vol Navy. This is, this is vintage Tennessee football. Uh, this is a seriously awesome tradition at Tennessee. So that's my number four. Rustin, I think your number three might sound similar. What's your number three? Yep, that would be a ditto. Uh, number three for me is the Vol Navy. And again, I think everybody's answers are going to be different based on their own personal circumstances. But the reason the Vol Navy made top five for me was in 98. <clears throat> some of y'all might remember that year. It was a pretty decent year. Um, in 98, I was at the Arkansas game, um, which honestly – you know, Clint Sterner was the reason we won the national championship. We can send him a ring. Um, I was sitting, that was a night game. I was sitting in that Calhoun's right there um, at lunch. We had gotten there early to, uh, to just be around town and tailgate and be there for the, for the game that night. And I, to this day, I like, I vividly remember where we were sitting in Calhoun's and watching all those bo boats just slowly come in all day long um, and just just amazed at, number one, just the sheer volume of them, um, but then number two, just, just how amazingly beautiful it was watching them all come in across the river. Um, and, you know, it's one of those, again, it's one of those memories that are just kind of etched in your brain forever, and that, that's why it's my number three. And how cool is it, you know, like this photo right here, you've got all those boats and kneeling so prominent right behind them right there. I mean, how cool. I mean, what a, what a, what a scene, you know, what a scene. I love this photo too, that I found <laughs> and giant inflatable smoky on their boat. Um, I mean, it, it's not just like, Hey, let's go to the game in our boat. Like there's tailgating happening on the boat. So, I mean, it's, it's, you know, just incredible. It, it's, it's incredible. Um, Zach said his number three is painting the rock, especially during rivalry games. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so, number th my number three, uh, this is where it got more difficult. And this is where I guess mine gets a little uh, controversial. Um, <laughs> you know, how, how do you narrow it down to the top three traditions in Tennessee football? And I really started thinking about what could there not – or what – as I was looking at each of these two different traditions, I was like, could it be game day without that? And if it could, then it didn't make the list. Um, these three things, I don't think it could be game day in, in Neyland stadium without these three things. And so my number three is singing Rocky top. Um, what, what is a Tennessee football game without hearing Rocky top like 80,000 times? I mean, like that's, you know, and the beauty of, of Josh Heupel's offense is we're hearing it even more now, you know? And so it, it, if you're not, if you don't like orange, you hate that song. <laughs> uh, that was one thing that we heard at SEC media days a couple of times was people talking about, you know, uh, sports anchors and, and other players talking about, they hate that song, uh, you know, cause I hear it when you're hearing it, that means something bad has just happened to your team. If you're the visiting team in Neyland stadium. So how could it be game day without singing Rocky top? And 
that's that's why it made my list. And Zach said, you know, that it's tough because there are so many good ones. And he's right. Uh, there's tons of them. And it, I mean, I, I wish I could, you know, do like a top 15 or something. That'd be easier. But um, number three for me was singing Rocky Top. What's your number two, Rustin? So my top two both both made top two for the same reason. Um, I, I think the the game day experience isn't just about the fans. It's also about the players and the recruits. And I love anything, anything that draws fans into the game alongside players and recruits, uh, I think is just a huge positive. Um, and, you know, I think anybody who has ever attended a Tennessee game, who has attended the Vol Walk, has to walk away from that going that was so cool i just i just gave five to Jawan jennings I, I just shook you know jabari jabari davis's hand um al wilson just chest bumped me i mean you know so <laughs> so many things that can happen because you're just in such incredibly close proximity and the players love it but you know when you talk to recruits one of the things they always say is when they come over the top of that hill and and they see that sea of orange in front of them and they see how just the sheer volume of people that are out there it's it gives them chills and you know it's it's one of the things that they always remember about their first visit um you know as a kid i remember being in that crowd you know as a teenager i remember being in that crowd as an adult i still love every time i get to be in that crowd um, and I just don't think there's much of anything like it anywhere else in the country. It's, uh, it's just so unique and so different and, and just such an amazing experience. And, you know, that's, that's a really good point because like this, this photo, for example, is taken from the, the balcony on the side of Neyland stadium there, you know, how, how many places, do people strategically go to a spot like this one to get this photo every week to show just how many people showed up to the pregame walk to the stadium? I mean, it, thousands upon thousands of people show up hours before the game to see this and, and to do what you just said, to get to high five Jawan Jennings and, and that kind of stuff. So, I mean, what, what a cool tradition, what a cool tradition and the camaraderie displayed between, you know, the fans and, and the team and coaches. And, uh, I mean, it's just a really cool thing. You see players hugging their, their families as they're walking down the street. Uh, it's just a really neat thing. And like I said, I mean, this is, this is almost a destination unto itself because people will get to this spot on the side of Neyland stadium to get a photo of the whole crowd and the, and the team making that turn. What a, what a cool moment. Um, we, we all know people who plan their entire day around how they're going to get their strategic spot in the vol walk, you know, like yeah. they've for years, they've scoped out different areas and they know where you have the best chance of, you know, getting to shake players hands. And, you know, they know which side of the street certain players tend to walk down more than others. And, you know, they, they, they literally map out their entire day on where they're going to be during this moment. Absolutely. That's a great point. Uh, number two for me is the checkerboard end zones. Uh, I mean, is there a more iconic thing of Neyland Stadium than those end zones? I mean, that's what, you know, people, we, I mean, well, okay, well, this photo. Checker Nealon is a thing because of the end zones. <laughs> uh, Checker TBA is a thing because of the end zones on the football stadium. It's just, it's iconic. It's, uh, you know, the, they start three yards in the, or one yard into the end zone. I mean, it's just, they're iconic. It's, it's such a cool thing. And so you can hear, you know, Bob Kessling saying, enter the checkerboards and, you know, all this kind of stuff. Uh, what a, what an iconic, iconic part of Tennessee football. Uh, that's why Tennessee fans got so ticked off when Kentucky put checkerboards on the, on their, the sleeves of their jerseys. They're like, we have checkerboards, you know, what, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, you know, that, well, like I this said, is, 
you know it's a big deal when it gets copied by high schools all over the state and sometimes colleges too. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so checkerboard end zones, that screams Tennessee football, in my opinion. Uh, Zach said about the vol walk, he said I never experienced that, but I will this year. He said, so my top five might be different next time. Zach said his number two is running through the T. He said, I know most people are going to say that's number one. Um, so Rustin's number two is the vol walk. My number two was the checkerboard end zones. Rustin, what's your number one? So my number one is running through the T, but it's the new at night version of running through the T. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the little things about this that are just so incredibly impressive. And yes, it's a new tradition, but I think it is one of the coolest things they've ever done. The, the, the ability to take that spotlight and put it on the T as it opens while the rest of the stadium is a weird, weird blend of pitch black and bright orange is just incredible. And, and when you add the component of when that thing opens and that spotlight comes on the tee and the fireworks, the orange, orange and white fireworks start going off down the side of the stadium, it's just incredible. And, and even at media day, even at media day this past week, they talked about um, non-Tennessee media people we're talking about the fact that this has become the best entrance in all of college football. Um, Cole Kublik, who, who, you know, on air said that the, the, the Eagle flying into the stadium is the, is the coolest pregame thing he's ever seen, but the absolute best entrance is now this, um, you know, there, these, these are huge fans of other teams that are actively saying there's nothing like this. And, and I just, when, when that, when that white spotlight came on, I was like, they figured it out. They, 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 <laughs> they found, they found a way to make this even better. I agree. Um, my number one is also running through the T and, uh, you know, my actually Rustin and I are both in this photo right here. Um, I'm my wife and I are up here in this white, uh, square up here, right off the screen. Rustin, you were over here, weren't you? Like somewhere in this area? In the we Oklahoma game? Your, we can't see your cursor. I don't know what you're pointing oh. at. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so everybody's like, what's he it talking about? Good. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm so wearing my, I think I'm wearing orange, but maybe white. <laughs> yeah, one of the two. Yeah. Uh so I mean, you know, um, this is the 2015 Oklahoma game. Um mm -hmm. the best, the best uh, I I'm wearing orange. I'm intro. wearing orange then because I'm in that I'm in that section directly diagonal from the Oklahoma fans. I had to listen to them the whole fourth quarter. Mm, gotcha. Um, we are on the opposite side of the stadium, uh, right below. We are in the terrace level, right below. We got uh, seats given to us, which was amazing, and uh, we were sitting right up there um, on the thirty yard line up there. It was awesome. Now the coolest announcer intro for this I've ever heard was Joe Tessator. It was, I think 2014. We were playing Arkansas state, which ironically Butch was our coach then. And now he's Arkansas state's coach, but we were playing Arkansas state and Joe Tessator had arguably the greatest call of all time um when that t opened up he said and when you see that orange power t open up and the tennessee volunteers run through the t you are swimming in college football pageantry and i was like oh man i get, I get pumped up even thinking about it now man uh what a great call it was i mean he was like he's like you, you the sea of orange runs through. i mean I, it was just oh it was awesome it was beautiful beautiful and so I think you're right. I mean, now, you know, they got the, the spotlight that illuminates the T. I mean, that's really cool. Uh, the fact that they were able to calibrate that, like you said, to, to zoom in right on that T. And the fireworks going off all around the stadium. The LEDs are bright orange. I mean, it's, it's cool, man. It is awesome. So uh, it's, it's hard 
it's hard not to watch it and and not get goosebumps. I mean, like every year, the first time, you know, the home opener, the first time the team runs through the tee, it's just, it's a, it's a special feeling because it's like, we got, we got the whole year ahead of us. Here it is for the first time this year. It's a special, special feeling. The, the, the first time each season that you get to see the guys run through the tee and man, oh man, what it must feel like for them to get to run through that tee, seeing 101, 950, 915, screaming their heads off for you. Man, what a, what a rush. What a rush that must be. So that's, that's my number one for sure. Um, let's see here. We had some other comments come in. Uh, Zach said number one for him was the checkerboard end zone. Totally understand that. I mean, that is Tennessee football. I totally agree. Uh, Traveling fools. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, Give us your, your top uh, five Tennessee football traditions. Uh, Let's see here. (coughs) Doug gave us his five. Want to go back up and finish Doug's? Yeah. So Doug said his number five is saying the maxims, which I mean, my goodness, you talk about something specific to Tennessee. That's a great one because, I mean, there is no other Neyland. He's Tennessee's. And so saying his maxims before the team runs on the field, huge. Uh, The checkerboard end zone, number four, absolutely iconic. Uh, The Vol Navy, absolutely. I mean, that is Tennessee football to a T, pun intended. Uh, Running through the T, number two. And the Vol Walk, number one. Um, so you know, all so, of those so are awesome. Is, so this is one of those, like I was talking about. So Doug, clearly his is based on personal experience because the only reason you would put the vol walk as number one is if you have a history of really good strategic spots, he's probably shaking <laughs> Peyton Manning's hand like six times. And, <laughs> yeah. and so like the vol walk for him has become the end all and be all. Yeah. Let us know who, who, who you giving a high five to. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool. If, that's pretty cool. If, if you got a, a, a good high five story, that'd be cool. Um, isn't it awesome that we can say we're only barely over a month away from getting to see all this stuff happening again? It's just fun, man. It's just fun. Uh, Doug said, I wish <laughs> me too, Doug, <laughs> me too. Um, getting to, getting to give Peyton a high five would be pretty cool. Um, Zach said he can't wait for the South Carolina game. Oh man, that place is just going to be bonkers. It's going to be amazing. Absolutely there's, amazing. There's going to be a few dudes on the South Carolina sidelines. They're going to have to go change their drawers after warmups. <laughs> it, it's it's going to yeah. be a bad day for them. Zach said 37 days. That's right. 37 days till it's football time in Tennessee. Um, Traveling Fools said, I am a Miami fan, but I do love a night game in Neyland. So Traveling Fools, just so everybody knows, uh, they are now joining us on on here, following along with us because they actually saw us on a Georgia uh, channel, a Georgia football channel. Uh, and kudos to Mayhem Matthew. He just let us, he just let us talk about Tennessee football and, and he let us brag on Tennessee football. Uh, it was a really cool little interview. Was, I don't know, maybe in February we did that March yeah. or something like that. Uh, so, I mean, that was, that was really cool that he let's do that and traveling full saw us on there. So we're so appreciative of them joining us on here now. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, hopefully Miami has a, a good year in the ACC. Uh, that would be awesome. If they beat Florida, we would be super happy with that. Uh, let's see here. Zach said, uh, well, I'm going there. So I'll be going to the ball walk. Yep, he's going to the South Carolina game. And so it's going to be amazing. Like it, it is going to be amazing. That game will be awesome. Uh, if you're, if you catch, funny, it's funny how even like the rest of the SEC media already knows what's going to happen that day. Like there were media people at, at SEC media days who weren't connected to Tennessee or South Carolina talking about how if Josh Heupel has the chance, he'll run the score up on South Carolina. And it's like, yep. like it, it just kind of crept into the conversation. And it's like, 
you're not even supposed to be talking about these two teams right now, but somehow that got involved in the conversation. Like everybody knows it's coming. Yeah. They mentioned that if if you're thinking about the same interview, I am, they mentioned the number 100. (laughs) Yeah. If, if he can run it up to a hundred, he will. (laughs) Oh no. I, yeah, I heard that interview too, but no, I'm, I heard it multiple times. I tried to follow as many people as possible that whole week and, and listen to a lot of different perspectives from a lot of different organizations and teams. And it just kept popping up in random conversations where honestly, sometimes it didn't even belong and it would just somehow make it into the conversation. Hey, one day, one day, <laughs> Volbros, SEC Media Days, it's happening. <laughs> Shooter's going to shoot, man. Shooter's going to shoot. Uh, let's see. Zach said, or Traveling Fool said, they might go to the Tennessee-Georgia game. You want to talk about another atmosphere that's going to be incredible? That atmosphere will be incredible especially if, if, if Tennessee's undefeated going in the game. But even if they're not, even if they're just undefeated in the East and that game is going to determine who goes to Atlanta, oh my goodness, that is going to be a rocking atmosphere. So Traveling Fools said might. So let me just go ahead on the record and say, if you have tickets for that game and you're not sure you're going, I will be more than happy to take them <laughs> off your hands. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Absolutely. Uh, Zach said Tennessee's going to crush South Carolina. Uh, Rebecca, hey, Rebecca, welcome. We're glad to see you. Uh, she said the South Carolina game will be my first game. I'm so excited. That is going to be a awesome first game uh, to, to go that's, to. That's a, heck of a, that's a heck of a first game ever. Um, <laughs> um, that, that is going to be amazing. Um, you may or may not encounter some folks before the game who – did not uh, use good strategy and and uh, and that kind of stuff. Um, you you may uh, you may encounter some folks struggling yeah. to uh, stay on their feet before the if, game. If, if that game does what we expect and ends up being the seven o'clock kickoff, head on a yeah. swivel, Rebecca. Head on a swivel yeah. <laughs> um, because there's going to be a lot of stuff flying around in every direction. Yeah. Um. There was one. There was one game we were at one time, and this poor guy, he just he was struggling. <laughs> it was it wasn't even kickoff yet, and he was like falling over on the sidewalk. Went, um, I was wise, wise decisions, people. Wise decisions. <laughs> I was at a night game once, and the dude sitting behind me passed out in the first quarter. I'm like, not not real sure what the point of coming to the game was. Um, yeah, it, it kind of defeated the purpose there, huh? Um. So it's going to be a raucous atmosphere. Uh, I mean, you want to talk about people screaming the whole game long. That's going to be a game where people are screaming the whole game long. Um, and it, I mean, that's just, that's just the way it's going to be. Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> Zach said you can get in line for those Georgia tickets. <laughs> Um, Rebecca said she's hoping it'll be at night. I that's okay. I hope it will too. And I totally agree with you, Rebecca. And I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a night game. I think it'll be the seven o'clock ESPN game because everybody knows. I mean, everybody, everybody knows what it's going to be like and they're going to want to be a part of that. And so it is not the best sec game of the day. So it won't be the, the three thirty CBS game. So, but it is the second best sec game of the day. And so it will be, I'm sure it will be a night game. And, and that'll be, man, Rebecca, you'll get to see the the light show and the fireworks going off. I mean, it's, I'm excited for you because that's going to be awesome. That's going to be awesome. I can't uh, remember what all the other games were at that day, but when we did our, when, <coughs> when we did our season preview, I remember clearly that we pegged that to be the eight o'clock game on ESPN. Yep. Um, yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, traveling fool said hadn't bought the tickets yet, but the wife has never been to a game there. So that would be a good first. Game. Oh yes, it would be a good first game in Neyland. Unfortunately, you just have to hear Georgia fans barking sometimes, which that's kind of annoying, but, uh, <laughs> but if you go to that Tennessee Georgia game, I mean, here, here's the thing. I think everybody watching this right now, I think everybody who watches this, the replay of this will all be shocked 
if that game does not determine who's playing in Atlanta representing the SEC East. So there's going to be a lot riding on that game. Um, it's going to be a incredible atmosphere. If, if Tennessee beats Alabama, then more than likely both teams will be entering that game undefeated. And it will most likely, if that's the case, be number one versus number two because Georgia's going to be preseason number one. And if they don't lose, they're not going to drop. If Tennessee beats Alabama then they're and then they're undefeated, that means they'll be number two at that point because they will have beaten – by that time, they will have beaten South Carolina, who will be a preseason top 25. They will have beaten Texas A&M, and they will have beaten Alabama. And so – that is, I mean, potentially going to be number one versus number two in Neyland Stadium for the right to go to Atlanta. Whoa. I mean, it's just, it's going to be awesome. Imagine, I can't think of the kid's name right now, but the quarterback for Georgia this year, he's never played in Neyland before. Imagine that atmosphere being the first time he tries to take a snap in Neyland. They won't be able to hear themselves think it'll be so loud. So talk about a home field advantage. That game right there, that is a night for a home field advantage right there. So to finish us out tonight, oh, oh, Carson Beck. Thank you, Doug. I appreciate that. I could not think of that guy's name. Thank you so much, Carson Beck. You're exactly right. Um, To close us out tonight, should we do the top five things that Jeremy Pruitt will have to do as a high school PE teacher to close the show? (laughs) Okay, so there's a thread going right now on Twitter. Um, whoa, Robert. Robert. Let's, let's Robert. settle down. <laughs> <laughs> Robert said the Vols will beat Georgia 45 to 17. Hey, I would love it if that happened. <laughs> Moderation is key. Um, I Slow will be happy and easy. For, um, <laughs> Zach, uh, Robert, I love it, man. Um, I'll be happy for like 38, 35 or 38, 37. How about, how about we'll just be happy with a win? Yes. One point and I'll be thrilled. (laughs) I mean, dude, if that happens, holy moly, uh, Josh Heupel will win coach of the year. If that happens, even if they lose, Mr. Jones is going to be on here in a second saying George is going 0 12. <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, Zach said, no, it's going to be 65 to 10. <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, I'll be happy with a one point win. Uh, that would be amazing. Um, so, top five things Jeremy Pruitt has to do as a high school PE teacher. Ready? Go. So, there's a, there's a thread on Twitter right now where the guy goes, um, he says something like, uh, can you imagine Jeremy Pruitt sitting in, uh, uh, PTA open houses? <laughs> I then, want, I want video footage of Jeremy Pruitt explaining the raw, the rules of dodgeball to a freshman PE class. <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> and then, uh, Jeff Kate, which we'll have Jeff Kate on our show probably next week. Uh, he's with off the bench sports in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, Jeff replied to that, uh, open house tweet with the, the famous photo of Pruitt during the Jeremy Pruitt show where he's sitting in that Brown suit and the, the checkered tie, like sitting there like that. And, uh, Jer- and Jeff said, uh, Jeremy chaperone in the prom like this, <laughs> The homecoming dance. So for awesome. those of you who are listening and don't know what I'm talking about, this morning, Plainview High School in Plainview, Alabama, decided to announce that they've hired a new high school PE teacher by the name of Jeremy Pruitt. They didn't mention that he was going to be the associate head coach for football or that he was going to be helping out with basketball. They just announced that he was going to be a new high school PE teacher. And yes, Rebecca is correct. He will be coaching the junior high basketball team. Yes. Uh, that was, that was 
mentioned on Twitter, it's it's the junior high basketball team. Uh, so, so for uh, those of you who don't know, the head football coach at Plainview High School is Jeremy Pruitt's father. Yep. That's uh may have had a little bit to do with him getting that job. Um they're gonna have a good coaching staff at Plainview. <laughs> If they hire Brian Nieder, Niedermeyer to coat to oh my goodness. home ec, I want to see Brian Niedermeyer teaching no, home ec. No, personal finance. Yeah. <laughs> personal finance. That's what he, there's, maybe there's they could do like a Dave Ramsey you can, thing You can down cover here. balancing a checkbook in home ec. That's true. This is how you get uh, your parents to help you start a bank account. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they have like a, a Dave Ramsey co-op program or something down there. <laughs> Brian can help run. Um, Zach said, get a Chick-fil-A bag. Yep, they'll have Chick-fil-A at lunch during the day. <laughs> um, he said, how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's, and then they need to go get Butch Jones. <laughs> he might what be available it? actually after this year. So he. <laughs> what does it say though? What does it say about Plainview High School? And the and the level of competitiveness in high school football in Alabama that less than a month ago, a man could be found guilty of over 200 NCAA violations. And they're like, yeah, sounds like a leader <laughs> of boys. Let's give him freshman PE. Yeah. Unreal. Unreal. Uh, Doug had a good question earlier. He said, what do you think of Shane Beamer? To me, he has some Butch Jones in him. 100 percent yes don't don't buy the act um so i i'm connected to a few people who around the south carolina program including his current i'm not going to say the position including one of his current assistant coaches and i will just tell you very bluntly don't buy the act uh, my favorite video of shane bieber was still that one where he had those glasses on looking up at the lights and, and, and he's like, you know, with the glasses on. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That was hilarious. Uh, so yeah, I, I would totally agree with that. Um, if, Hey, hopefully none of the South Carolina players will, will ever fall on a helmet, but hopefully that won't happen. But Never if know. they do, then that'll confirm that. Yeah. He's got some, uh, he's got some Butch Jones in him. Uh, Robert said, I don't believe that Georgia offense will be able to get on track. It'll be louder than the Bama game last year. Um, so uh, it's possible 100%, especially throwing the ball. Um, I mean, Georgia can always run it. They always can run it. Um, but you know, fortunately for Tennessee this year, we've got an improved front six cause we're in a four, two, five. So, um, you know, Fortunately, we got an improved front six, especially a linebacker with Aaron Beasley and uh, Peely back there now. So um, it will be difficult for Georgia to run the ball with repeated success. I'll put it that way. They will have to throw it. They will. Um, so, I mean, I agree that it will not, they will not score a ton of points against us. Well, they didn't last year either. Um, you know, I mean, they, they, well, 30 something, but uh, you know, it, they will not that I don't think they'll cross 30 this year for sure. And if, if, if you're looking at Tennessee's offense and you're saying the team they're playing will not score 30 points automatically, you got to think that's good news for Tennessee's offense. Uh, Doug said Niedermeyer is at IMG, I believe. Yep. Coaching linebackers. In, I mean, that's just bizarro world right there. Uh, how that guy still has a job at IMG after all the stuff that came out. It's pretty, I don't know. It's actually pretty simple. Um, there are no recruiting rules of any kind in the state of Florida. I could literally, if I wanted to, y'all may not know this, I could play football at one school, decide I like the basketball coach at another school, transfer the day football season ends and be immediately eligible at the other school, <laughs> then decide that I really like the baseball coach at another school and the day basketball season ends, I can transferred to a third school in one year and play three different sports in the state of Florida and be immediately eligible at all three. So when there's zero recruiting rules, Brian Niedermeyer's in a pretty cushy job. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, his girlfriend's getting a whole bunch of new clothes, and uh, he's he's so trying. As long to pay as his mom it. and dad don't know. Exactly. So y'all keep it on the on the download. Don't let his parents find out. Um, that's still bizarre that he even said that and tried to lie like that. Um, Zach say what does it say about the state of Alabama that they let Pruitt come down? Yeah, that's, that's fair. Um, Shane Beamer is a used car salesman. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> so it's ironic that this comes up because I was actually in a conversation literally today about this very topic. And I can't, I can't say what was said someday. I will. Um, when the, ind- when the individual who said it is no longer there, I'll, I'll tell the story, but I will just say literally today, this exact conversation took place about Shane Beamer including a current member of his coaching staff. So when his own people are saying it ain't right, don't trust it. (laughs) Uh, Zach said that gives used car salesmen a bad name. (laughs) Uh, I want to close with a quote from Peyton Manning. That seems appropriate. Uh, This was in the Chattanooga on the day that Uh, Bobby Denton passed away. And so I guess, you know, we we talked about what we think are the top five Tennessee football traditions. I guess you could kind of get a little bit of of, uh, how Peyton felt about the Tennessee football traditions from this quote. He said, Bobby Denton's voice and expressions were an integral part of Tennessee football. A couple of things I could always count on a Tennessee football Saturday as a player were the vol walk to the stadium. So there's one running out through the tee, the band singing Rocky Top, and Bobby Denton right uh, during pregame warm-ups coming on the loudspeaker and saying, it's football time in Tennessee. <laughs> he said, every time I heard that, I knew kickoff was near, and it was always kind of an exciting moment. The crowd and the players would get excited, and of course he would go on to echo his other famous expression, pay these prices and please pay no more. So there's, you know, there's, Peyton's, I guess you could say, his five favorite Tennessee football traditions. And uh, a lot of it had to do with pregame stuff. Uh, it, it's an event. I mean, it really is. It's, it's, a, it's a whole day event is, is really what it is. Uh, Zach had a good idea. So you need to do top five players of all time. Oh, man. Woo. That'd be tough. But we're going to do it. That's a good idea. <laughs> Um, we'll, we'll take a whole bunch of people off and people are like, why'd you pick them? It should have been this guy. It'll be fine. Um, uh, that'll be, I oh, mean, that's, that's tough. Day Rick Rogers. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> uh, JJ Peterson. <laughs> I was about to say, I hear a JJ Peterson sighting coming. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Top five Tennessee football traditions. Hey, if you're catching this on the replay, uh, let us know in the comments what 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 you think, what your top five are. Uh, share this share this with your buddies. You know, text a buddy. Danny White said so. So do what he said. He's the man. Um, you know, text text a buddy. Let him know. Hey, check out this episode. Tell us what your top five are. I mean, we love to hear other people's top fives. It's it's fun uh, because it, I mean, it's just it's camaraderie to hear other people's top fives. Uh, we got a lot of stuff coming up soon. Uh, we're excited to have Jeff Kate on our show soon. Uh, he'll be talking about covering, you know, some of the Chattanooga based talent that uh, Tennessee has recruited. There's several people from the local Chattanooga area. That's where we are in Chattanooga. And so um, it'll be fun to hear Jeff talking about those guys and his interviews with them. Uh, Doug said, really enjoyed this discussion. Good job, guys. Thank you, Doug. We appreciate you joining us, man. Zach said, thanks guys. Fun show. Zach, always love seeing you, buddy. Always love it. And Traveling Fools, thank you for joining us, Traveling Fools. We really appreciate it. He said, fun show. And uh, we hope you get to go to that Georgia game. That'd be awesome. And Uh, if you don't, I'll take your tickets. Absolutely, yes. (laughs) No doubt. We'll we'll take care of it for you. Um, But thank you all so much for joining us. Man, this is just so much fun to talk about. And we're so excited. We're so close. So close to being football time in Tennessee. So. I hope everybody has a great evening, a great weekend ahead of you, and we will see you all very, very soon. Go Vols, baby.